Hello, in this tutorial we're going to roll up some SharePoint tasks. First of all, we're going to click the drop down with inside the Lightning Conductor web part and choose Create View. The Lightning Conductor web part allows us to create multiple views which can be from different types of lists or also different configurations of the same list rollups. So what I'm going to do first of all is click onto the web part tab with inside the dialog box and name this Tasks. So we've provided it with a name and we've set that as the default view. We're now going to move across to the data source tab where we can select first of all the lists and the libraries that we want to include in the rollup and also what type of list we want to include as well. So we have several choices for the source. I can go through and select individual lists which could be task lists in different sites in different site collections. So we would simply scroll through and select the ones that we want to include by uh, checking it. We can also select the multiple sites option and this allows me to navigate through uh, different web applications and different site collections and simply select the sites that I want to include inside my aggregation. So this will be the scope of the aggregation and then we would go through and set the list type. So any task list that gets generated inside any of these sites will automatically be included in the rollup. We could also include entire site collections. So if we wanted to choose uh, multiple site collections here, I could choose my teams and also sales and so on, include those three site collections and then specify the type of list that I want to aggregate. So in here I'm going to choose the tasks list template. We could also filter by content type if we wanted to, and we could also enable caching of which there is no need for a rollup such as this. On the right hand side we can also enable audience targeting if we so choose and we can also set up the filters and there's two types of filters that the lightning conductor supports we can have some persistent filters and also dynamic filters the persistent filters are set by the user who is configuring the lightning conductor and all users will be adhering to that filter and we've also got the dynamic filters which would allow each individual user to apply their own filters by clicking onto the column headers on the columns tab is where we can build our view. So, so far we've set the scope of our rollup, we've chosen the type of list that we want to roll up, and now we can go through and design how our view is going to look. So as we scroll down, we can see all of the different columns that are available to task lists. So we have the task name column, for example. We've also got the start date, which would be quite relevant. We have the priority, which rather than display that, I'm actually going to group by it in just a moment. Um, so some of the useful ones would be the due date, who the task is assigned to, and the percentage complete. Once I've selected the columns that I want to display, I can simply drag them and drop them into the order that I want to display them in. So I'm going to simply drag the task name column all the way up to the top here. So that is the first column that will appear in my view and it kind of makes sense to have the start date before the due date so I'll drag the start date up and drop that anywhere before the due date. So once we've selected the columns that we want to display we can set some properties on each of those columns we can provide a, a column alias so if we wanted to have maybe task title instead of task name or something to that effect we can type in the alias here. We could also set the column width uh, usually there is no need to, it's going to automatically adjust the column to the content that is inside the column. However, it will word wrap if we decided to set the column width slightly smaller than the content. We can then also set the display format. So for the percentage complete column, I'd like to format that, which is basically a number column. I'm going to format that as a percent. That way, rather than 0 0.5, we will get 50% and so on. The assigned to column, we could do things like show the user's presence, so we could see if that user is online or not. Uh, we'll scroll down further and we can set the start date data formatting, so we can have a, a short date or if we wanted to have date and time, year and month, that sort of thing we can do. And likewise for the due date as well. Bear in mind also that we could overtype these with our very own formatting so if we wanted to have something specific then we could do so and that will uh, allow us to uh, display it accordingly. 
We also have the group by column, and we can group by as many columns as we like. There is no limit on the number of columns that you can group by. Uh, so what we're going to do is scroll down, and what I'd like to do is group by the priority column and also group by the task status. Now some people would like to see tasks by priority first, so they can see all the high priority tasks. Uh, others may want to see the task status first so that they can see which tasks are completed, which tasks are still in progress, and so on. So you have the choice as to how you want to set this grouping order. So we can simply drag the priority column below the task status or the task status below the priority, and that will allow the grouping order to take effect. We can also sort in the same way. So we could sort by multiple columns in here, and that would allow me to choose which is the primary sort column and which is the secondary sort column. Additionally, we have the ability to filter, and these filters will vary depending on the field type. So if we were to filter on the assigned to column, notice we have the me checkbox. Uh, so that would allow me to do things like contains me if the task was assigned to a group of people, or we could also say is equal to me if we just wanted it to be filtered out based on uh, having myself in the assigned to column. And we can add as many of these as we like with ands and ors and, and so on as well. We also have the ability to sort on things like date columns. So if we wanted to sort by a date time field, notice that we get the today checkbox. And I can offset that by a number of days. So I could see tasks I need to start in the next week or tasks that are due within the next week and so on. Or we can also filter across columns as well. So the advanced filtering option allows me to first of all add as many levels as we like so we can add filtering groups and filter conditions so I'll add multiple filter conditions in here so if we wanted to we could set something like the priority is high or the due date is equal to today and we'll offset that by three so we're looking at the next three days and that is currently an and so we'll set that to an or so that would be my condition across multiple columns. We also have the ability to add calculated columns as well. And that is in another video. So if you'd like to uh, watch the calculated column video, you'll see how you can add columns together, or you could inject some code into that column as well if you wanted to provide KPIs or something like that. We also have conditional formatting. Now this is extremely useful for a task list. So what we could do, for example, is highlight any tasks that are marked as completed. So here's our, our completed column. We could uh, choose to display that or not. It doesn't really matter. Um, what is important is we uh, click onto the conditional formatting and we can apply the formatting to the whole row or we can apply the formatting to just the single column. We can choose the for color and the background color. We have a color picker that would allow us to choose the type of color that we want to uh, display. So uh, in fact, let's go for something slightly green and we'll make that bold. And under the completed uh, column, we can set that equal to yes or no. So simply by uh, ticking the checkbox there. And obviously for different field types, we're gonna see different controls for each of those. You can also add uh, more formatting so if we wanted to do the opposite and have uh, the background color set to red for anything that is not uh, completed then we can do so and so on and so forth so we'll save the formatting another option that we have and again we'll look at this in a, another video is to also set some summary functions so if we wanted to for example show the average time for each task and so on we could do that um, what we're going to do is navigate to the display tab and this will allow me to finalize my view by setting properties such as the pagination so we'll display 50 items per page we can display a message should there be no tasks so we can display an appropriate message there uh, and we've also got the linking column. This is the column that we want to click onto in order to open up the item. So I'll set that as the actual task name column, which would make the most sense. We'll have a look at some of the other properties in some further videos. Um, for now, I'm just going to simply save this view. 
and here we are with our aggregated tasks so let's uh, come out of the design of the page and here we can see the uh, the task roll up so we've uh, we've got the multiple levels of grouping so notice under high priority we have completed and in progress tasks under normal priority we've got some completed deferred and not started tasks and uh, low priority we have uh, some tasks in progress as well so in order to work with these tasks what we can do is uh, simply click onto them so we can click onto a task here and one of the nice things about the lightning conductor web part specifically is that when we click onto a list item this list item could belong in a different site or in a different site collection or even a different web application for that matter however it opens up in context with the page so the user isn't getting lost when they're trying to navigate around SharePoint so we click onto the task it opens it up in context we also have the ribbon there so if we wanted to be able to uh, do things like show more columns or maybe edit the item we can edit the item in here and maybe uh, assign that task to somebody else so we can choose another user there and uh, and simply go through and save it. You can also see the conditional formatting being applied. So we've got that uh, green color for the uh, completed tasks, which is uh, which is nice to see. And the other thing that we uh, we set was the ability to filter based on a user's uh, filter requirements. So uh, each user could basically come through and, and filter the web part simply by clicking onto the filter header and that would apply the filter uh, in place on the browser without interfering into other users views so um, that's how to create a single task view uh, so we have uh, tasks appearing on the menu there and uh, we could add multiple views to this lightning collector instance which you'll see in later videos okay many thanks